these militants who are recruited in the name of jihad they are mobilizing the people for the violence i thought he was a remarkable politician as well as a good man i'm here to be a voice of my minority and to serve the suffering minorities of pakistan he was committed to what he believed in and he was aware that he might suffer violence or murder as a result and saw it as uh, an aspect of martyrdom for his faith that he was doing as to follow in the footsteps of Jesus who suffered on behalf of the poor and oppressed When 500 Muslim extremists, armed with guns and explosives, attacked the Christian enclave of Gojra in Pakistan, their actions were condemned by the minorities minister, Shabazz Bharti. I live for the religious freedom and I'm ready to die for this cause. By speaking out, he had just signed his own death warrant. He was a courageous, uh, a bold, a brave man uh, who dedicated his life and ultimately paid the ultimate price of his life. On Wednesday, March the 2nd, 2011, Shabazz Bharti was shot 30 times in broad daylight in Islamabad. His supporters said a revolution would spring from his blood. A year later, Pukhar News has been investigating if Shabazz Bharti died in vain or if he made a real difference to the way minorities are treated. His legacy is one of struggle against injustice, struggle for the rights of minorities, and the courage to stand up and speak up and demand that action be taken. Shabazz Bharti was killed because he denounced the blasphemy laws, which sanctioned a death penalty for an attack on Islam. The laws have been condemned throughout the world, but remain popular in Pakistan. A mere accusation is enough to bring a case to court and certainly to tarnish a person's reputation uh, for life. And if the person who's been accused is a member of a religious minority, that often puts them in a place of extreme vulnerability where they're susceptible to um, social pressures, to violence, harassment against them and their families and so on. So th these are very, very dangerous indeed, the blasphemy laws in Pakistan. We had a lot of victims that was due to the misuse of blasphemy law. So he thought this law has to be changed because so many victims falsely accused on the name of blasphemy. And many times, if one member of the family is accused and the whole family is victim. Bharti wasn't the first politician whose murder can be put down to the blasphemy laws. When Punjab Governor Salman Taseer was killed, the Senate even refused to offer prayers. Crowds celebrated his death in the streets. We had editorials saying that this was a good thing that happened and, you know, praising his murder and stuff. And there can be no plainer incitement to murder and there can be no plainer form of hate speech. In most of the world, the murder of an important politician would be headline news for days. But in Pakistan, within two hours, the killing of Shabazz Bharti had been replaced by reports of unrest in the Punjab and the Cricket World Cup in India. Around the world, politicians and religious leaders were appalled. The fact that such a, a major figure can be killed for his politics and for his beliefs always hurts democratic politicians everywhere. As a human being, you have to be concerned about people who suffer for their faith, whatever that faith is and wherever in the world it is. Nobody should be persecuted because of what they believe. In 
Canada, supporters of Shabazz Bharti have been gathering to mark the anniversary of his death. At a memorial service, they sang his favourite hymn in Urdu. Bharti's sister Jacqueline still hasn't recovered from the shock of his death. She says not a moment goes by when she doesn't think of him and the day he was killed. I can't express those feelings that how oh, I can, that time I started crying and I started, I straightway went to go, uh, went to my prayer room and I asked God, help me to my brother, let my brother come back. Jacqueline told Pukar News that the family was struck by Shabazz Bharti's courage and principles from his very early years. He used to gather all the poor children and he used to feed them. He used to take food from us. He used to tell my mother, make so much rice today, I am very hungry. But when he used to come to eat food, he was telling, no, no, I will not eat here, I'll eat outside. And he used to take in one big plate the food. And then when we were seeing where he is taking the food, outside there were poor children and he used to feed them. Much of his family has long believed Canada a safer haven than Pakistan, but he was determined to stay in Islamabad and fight for his people. Despite the fact that there had been death threats to him as a minister, he must have lived with the daily knowledge that, uh, like the governor of Punjab who was murdered, that his life was at risk, but he, he was going to stick to his guns. He was sharing to us that there are threats to me. Last after my father died, he got more threats and he was upset. He was, but he was not upset that they will kill him. He was upset then what will happen to my community. Organizations like Christian Solidarity Worldwide have been campaigning for more rights for minorities and they're demanding justice. The hunt for the killers is still continuing and they want to know why. It is imperative that the killers of Shabazz Bhatti are brought to justice as quickly as possible um, to send a strong message uh, that uh, this kind of violence will absolutely not be tolerated and to strengthen the rule of law within Pakistan. Arrests have been made but the investigations into both murders have been painfully slow. I think the justice will be done because, you know, maybe, maybe this law will take a hundred years for amendments to come or for it to be removed so that the misuse of the blasphemy law is stopped. But um, if it takes a hundred years or two hundred years or fifty years, my father took the first step. In Pakistan, the minorities continue to live in fear. Christians, Sikhs, Hindus and Jews complain of harassment and unfair treatment in the jobs market. But after Shabazz Bharti was killed, the government did make one vital concession. The minority parties now have four extra members in parliament, which means four extra voices who can fight for and defend the rights of the oppressed. I think with the addition of four parliamentarians from the minorities and with the, the, the awakeness in the country, things will improve for the minorities because of the assassination of people like Shabazz Bhatti. Interfaith dialogue championed by Shabazz Bhatti is also continuing and there are high hopes it will lead to increased education and tolerance and ultimately to less violence. He died in a good cause and I think that opened the eyes of many people who did not know what the consequences of such actions would be. Fear of assassination means few politicians will now speak out as bravely as Salman Tassir and Shabazz Bharti. But both families say they're determined that even though they're dead, their voices will still be heard. I have a duty. My father didn't die so that all of us would live our lives with our head down. 
and I feel like it, it's still important to, to keep speaking up about what happened and, and everyone should know why it happened and that it was so senseless. He was alone in this mission. We all want to continue till the last moment of our life. I think it's our duty, not, next to okay, I am politician or not politician, to stand for the rights, it's our duty. Everybody has to do that. He will go down in history as a, uh, a brave man and we hope as a national hero uh, in the context of Pakistan. We are pursuing for justice and we will not compromise on that.